situation. So, are there any subtle There are a correction in that question. Hmm? What we are is liberation. Okay. What we are after is nothing. Okay. Yeah, liberation is the path and the destination. Okay. And we are liberated. That is why no binding, no liberation. Na muktir na bandha. I'm Shiva already. But that understanding is not happening. Yeah. That is exactly what we are trying to achieve with all, all our activity, any spiritual path. Yeah. So if we say that we are after something, that means that we are not that. Mm -hmm. Now that's not true. That's true. We are already liberation. We are liberated. We are completely liberated. This is the truth. But and, uh, because we are operating with the mind factor, mind does not allow you to clearly feel it, experience it. That is why this, this uh, equation happens. Okay, liberation and enlightenment, uh, are they the same thing? And no, also no uh, let me, uh, part by part is better for me. Okay. Liberation and enlightenment are not the same thing. Enlightenment is like a graduation, a state where you are able to understand things from a higher perspective. You know, but that does not mean that you are liberating yourself completely from that state also and going. You are still liberate from enlightenment to dissolution. Mm -hmm. Means you are completely nullifying yourself, dissolving yourself completely and becoming one with the cosmic energy, which you can call Father or Parakram or God. So uh, enlightenment takes you to a level of awareness where you don't fall down again normally. But again, you have the body, you have this, you have the activities of the body. You will feel hungry, you will have to go to the toilet, you will have to take a bath, you will have to, probably you will have emotions as well, some of them. But again, you are operating from a different perspective, a higher level. So the, the impact are different, things are less. You know, it's like you are graduated. You will not go back to 10th te class again. Mm -hmm. There's no need to go back. L like that, a graduation or a post is a, is like a state. Enlightenment is a state. In that state, you are a different person. You are probably able to see in 360 degrees. You are, you are able to perceive more than you see. You know, all these faculties will work. But again, liberation means complete moksha. Liberation, dissolving and going. Means you, you have nothing to do with earth. You want nothing from here. Nothing here pleases you, makes you happy. It doesn't mean that you want to have a cup of coffee, you don't have it. That's not the point I'm saying. But nothing is binding you. Nothing is making you feel uh, uh, hooked to the earth, this plane. Mm -hmm. yeah? that, that plane, you reach and that, that I am very happy, I am pleased, I am always in bliss state. And then I merge with the consciousness of the uh, God at the time of leaving. Or any, any identity, like even if uh, like Krishna says, you can worship any deities, but eventually you are coming to me anyway. So all the deities are expressions of one consciousness. Supreme energy. Any form is representation of the supreme energy. Form is conglomeration of energy. Yeah. Matter is conglomeration of energy. So all the all the matters you see around are <coughs> conglomeration of energy. If you go to the atom level and dissect the atom, it becomes raw energy. Right? So this is the truth of existence. In that level, you become completely disintegrated. You become light body. You become subtle. And then you are uh, ready to merge, merge, expand into the ocean. The drop becomes the ocean. That is not enlightenment, that's beyond enlightenment. Yeah, okay. You have to establish an enlightenment yeah. and then you have, to, you have to shed. That is why seva has a lot of value, service. When a person does a lot of service to the humanity, to the people, to the animals, to the birds, that time, uh, big time cleansing happens and detachment happens. It helps. And then uh, the path is easier. That is why many of the gurus uh, insist on serving in the when you are evolving. Because that goes hand in hand. When you become more and more selfless, it helps the dissolution. It's a, it helps enlightenment also. Yes. So with enlightenment, there is this um, possibility or that <coughs> you can drop back, but not with liberation. Well, no. Uh, enlightenment, uh, it is very unlikely that you will drop back. But you can... You can See, the, there are two things like what we discussed yesterday. Like you become another sometime. You know, that can cause a fall for you. Like uh, uh, some people get attracted to you because of your energy and your power. And then you, you can probably become that person for some time or reflect that person. Mm -hmm. That is a falling mm -hmm. in the overall thing. But I do not think that you will ever fall from a state. You are 
probably taking a temporary detour. I, this is my opinion. You are not per se falling. But uh, in the path you can fall many times. Until you achieve that state, until you reach the plateau and establish there, there, there is a lot of opportunities of falling. That you see in the, all the seekers. They climb up so much, they fall again. <laughs> then they climb up so much, fall again. Uh, that is because of the mind, play of the mind. Mind manipulates you. And then you fall. Then you climb up, fall, climb up. But a guru is with you. Aiding you, helping you, holding you. So, uh, that faith in the Guru and faith in the path will help you. Now, even if you do not have a physical Guru, if you have faith in the path, Gurus will come and help you. And the term spiritual traveler? Someone, someone is a, like a... Renegade. A spiritual traveler. No, not, not in the sense of human activities or anything, but what, a liberated soul. I mean, you know, that, that's able to travel the... The dimensions beyond the, the mind, the well, that, mind. Well, that, that I feel would be a wrong understanding mm -hmm. in, in the case of absoluteness. Mm -hmm. Because you need to have a unit to move. You need, need to be a unit to move anywhere. Yeah. You can move as with this. If you are expanded beyond all these forms, mm -hmm. then where are you moving? The state of Parabrahma is immovable. State of soul in reality is immovable. A soul when sitting in a body, that substratum, the whole a configuration is moving and then we have a, a false feeling that the soul is moving but the soul is connected to the Supreme God you know and that is immovable omnipresent present everywhere like air you know a, a, an aspect of air can move but the air per se is not moving so a liberated soul then does not have light bodies they can shed the light bodies as well they can dissolve back into the ocean then you wouldn't even know the identification yeah, yeah. So, so, if you become the full ocean, there is only a vibration, not a movement. Okay. So, but uh, if you if you uh, choose to stay in the unit form, in whichever uh, uh, capacity, whether it is in the human body or another body, or no body, then if you choose to be in the unit form, then you can have motion. Because then, it, then you are still in the realm of relativity. That is, from here to there you can move. Because you are, you are choosing to be in the unit form. But otherwise, how do, how do, if you are fully expanded, where will you move to where? You are everywhere already. You know, that is the strange structure of God, right? The Supreme Father is everywhere. There is nothing beyond Him. Everything is formed out of Him. And all the matter that you see are a reflection of Him. And in that level, a matter can move. Because matter is only representing Him and it has got a mobility because it is operated on relativity. It operates on duality. But once you merge with the whole consciousness and become one with the universal consciousness, you have no identification anymore, you don't exist as a unit. Where will you move from where? It's omnipresence. Yeah, it's only omnipresence. Mm -hmm. Beyond universal consciousness? There's no, nothing beyond universal mm -hmm. consciousness. Universal consciousness is the supreme. And also there are layers of that. But uh, that way you can never understand that using your intellect. <coughs> because the nature of God has to be experienced. The structure of God has to be experienced. Uh, until you become that, you will never know. For example, what is Mohanji's consciousness, what you saw, you will never understand you seeing the video until you become me. <coughs> you know, once you become me, oh, okay, this is the game. You understand. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm saying in the minimum level. That is the same with Krishna's consciousness, Jesus's consciousness. You will never understand. Then that is why we have, we criticize. Why do we criticize another person? Because of ignorance. Because we have set certain norms, rules and we expect the person to operate in that level. Because we don't understand his consciousness. Can you put Krishna into any slot? Impossible. Because they have operated beyond that slots anyway. <coughs> so, once a, a soul like completely uh, merges with the universal consciousness and be, you know, it becomes universal cons consciousness then from that point if the soul wants to like maybe re-embody uh, can't do that you can yeah yeah of course because actually consciousness has multiple dimensions right. you can extract yourself and bring yourself back okay but it may not be to the earth plane what will you do here uh, you know uh, it may not be to the earth plane that will be more on a purpose level yeah. 
like you have to do some activity or something has to be something is important or something is is uh, on a on a cosmic plane there is a validity for that activity. Okay. You may withdraw yourself from the ocean and become a unit and do it, come back and merge. And, and that time there is no karmic binding. Karmic binding is usually related to a body. Or in, in other planes also, there are certain planes where karma works. But again, that is related uh, to a particular uh, unit, uh, unit or form, and also it has a duration, a particular longevity, mm -hmm. from here to here, that is defined. Understand one thing, whenever you rent a car, it's for a duration, right? A time, time span. You can't keep it forever, unless you buy it, right? So, understand it's like a rent a car. This unit is occupied only for a period of time. It could be one year, ten year, twenty year, hundred years. But beyond that, you have to return it back to where it came from. You know, even if you buy a car, you have to probably change it later on, right? Similarly. So that is the understanding that we must have when we when we move on. But the understanding must translate into experience. That is the exactly what you are striving for. Yeah. That is why we are talking. First is the knowledge, then is the wisdom. If knowledge does not con get converted into wisdom, it's absolutely useless. <laughs> it's a botheration for other people because we keep talking what we do not know. <laughs> we keep talking what we do not know most of the time because we, we collect book knowledge and we articulate it. But in zero experience. Experientially, if you do, you may not even talk. Or if you experienced it, you may not articulate it. Mohanji, uh, you said something about uh, once you reach enlightenment, you, the chances for falling are almost you nil. Know, um, before that, the climbing and falling and the climbing and falling uh, is the value of climbing and falling and climbing and falling again to increase uh, awareness. Well, uh, in principle, yes, but sometimes it doesn't happen. Okay. Because what happens is if the mind is ruling the mind will uh, keep on shifting the goalpost. Okay. That is where you fall. Mm -hmm. Because it keeps changing the goalpost and the, by the time you are ready to, to, to score the goal, the goalpost has moved. This is the play of the mind. The mind is making that happen. And that is, not a, that, that is usually the reason why you fall. Actually speaking, the re main reason for everybody's fall from, from the uh, progress is the mind. Mind usually makes you... Uh, uh, for